Hey, this is Charles Jager with Shutterstock. In this quick tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to batch process photos for clients in Adobe Bridge. We're gonna look at a few procedures that I do in Adobe Bridge that really should speed up your workflow when you're getting images set up and organized for a client. We'll look at steps like batch color correcting raw images and also batch exporting images to various formats such as JPEG or PSD and also how to rename a group of files for client use very quickly. Knowing how to do these things in Adobe Bridge can be a big time saver. All right guys, like I mentioned, I'm gonna be working in Adobe Bridge. And if you're unfamiliar with Adobe Bridge, it's essentially a digital asset management application. Really just provides a convenient way to organize and preview your files. So I've got a folder set up here with some photos I wanna work with. So I'm just gonna go inside of it. And now we can see some various landscape shots I'm gonna be working with for this tutorial. This is a set of images I took with a drone and with each image it captures one raw file and one JPEG file. So essentially I've got 40 files in total in this folder, but again there's really only 20 because again we have 20 that are raw files or .dng files and 20 that are JPEG files. Now again bringing this back to a real world situation, what I would do in this case is with my drone photos, what DJI drones actually do, I, I want to work with the JPEG files but it actually applies a kind of a denoise filter when it saves those JPEG files, so they're not quite as clear, they're actually a little muddy compared to the actual RAW file. So what I wanna do here with this is I'm actually gonna process the RAW files in here first, because I wanna export those out to be the JPEG images I wanna to send to my client. Now again, if you're not working with RAW images, you can go ahead and just skip this step, but I just wanna go ahead and show you this anyway. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select one of my RAW images here, I'm just gonna double click it, and that's gonna launch Photoshop, and that's gonna open up Camera Raw. And if you're unfamiliar with Camera Raw, it's essentially just a nice way for us to process our digital images. Think of it kind of like processing film, but again, we're using digital images here. So it's got a lot more data and we can go in here and adjust quite a few settings. So you can see this is a very flat image the way it saved it in the raw format. So I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna make some basic changes to this image that I know I'm gonna wanna apply to all the other raw images. Cause again, all these were taken at the same shoot, kind of close to the same time period and the same time of day. So all the changes I make to this one image will probably work for all the other images. So I'll just kind of show you the steps I'm gonna take here. So I'm gonna come in here on this and it looks a little overexposed. So I'm just gonna dial this down a little bit and adjust a few of these other settings. I'll bring up the shadows. So I'll increase the blacks up a little bit here. Maybe increase the clarity and pull up the vibrant sun just to bring out the nice blue sky and the green trees. And then I might come over here to the lens corrections and I'm gonna turn on remove chromatic aberrations and then also enable profile corrections for the lens because again, this was taken with a DJI drone and Camera Raw has a preset for that. So it goes ahead and adjusts uh, the lens field of view so that everything looks correct. Also, I come up here under effects and I'm gonna go ahead and dehaze this image just a little bit to increase the clarity on that. You can see in the background there. So that looks pretty good. I'm pretty satisfied with that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click done and I'm gonna go back into Adobe Bridge. And you'll notice that that preview has now updated. You can see how this is really a lot more saturated and looks a lot better than this next image in line. You'll also see this little icon up here that's appeared. And what that tells us is basically we've made changes to the raw file of this photo. And so I don't wanna go through and have to do that to each one of these raw images. It'd be a lot easier if I could just copy those settings that I applied to this one image and just paste them onto all these other raw images to speed up my workflow. And we can actually do that. So what we're gonna do on that image, we made our changes. I'm gonna right click on it. And you're gonna see down here where it says develop settings. And so if we come over here, you're gonna see we can copy those settings. So essentially like we're developing film, we can copy those settings for that image that we developed. So I'm gonna come over here to this next image. I'm gonna right click. And I'm gonna come back down to develop settings. And I'm gonna select paste settings. And you're gonna see it's gonna ask us, do you wanna paste all of these various settings here that you made changes of? And I wanna go ahead and click okay. And you're gonna see that that went ahead and automatically applied all those changes to this image so instead of us having to dive into Camera Raw and make those changes manually, we can just copy and paste them. And what's really nice as well is we can actually do this to all of our raw images at one time. So I'm gonna select this next one. I'm gonna hold Shift. I'm just gonna come down here to the end of my .dng files here and click. And you can see I selected all those raw files. And I'm just gonna right click now again, do the same thing, develop settings, paste settings. And again, it's gonna ask us, do you wanna apply all of these different settings here? I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. Now you're gonna see is that updates and applies those same settings to all these images. So it's essentially like we just process all those images very quickly. So again, saving us a lot of time. So now that we've applied all those changes to the raw files, I don't wanna send the raw files directly to the client because the raw files are quite large. And again, I probably wanna send them something more like a JPEG or a PSD. So I wanna go ahead and export all of these now to be JPEG format. But again, I don't wanna to have to open each one of them up and open them into Photoshop because that would take a lot of time and time's money obviously for us here. So we can go ahead and batch process these so it will automatically export all of them out very quickly. 
So let me just go ahead and show you what we need to do for that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come up here and select the first raw image that I wanna work with, and I'm just gonna hold shift again, and I'm gonna select all the raw images that I have. And again, these don't have to be raw images for this next step. You could do the same process with JPEGs or any other image format you have. So I'm gonna come up here to Tools, and you're gonna see Photoshop, and you're gonna see Image Processor. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. That's gonna open up Photoshop and open up this Image Processor options here. And it's gonna give us quite a few different options we can go ahead and input in to automatically export these files the way we want them to. So the first option is asking us, do we want to open up the first image and apply any raw settings? Well, we don't wanna do that because it's actually what we just did in Adobe Bridge already. So we can go ahead and skip that step. The next step is where we wanna save these at. So you can select a folder, or in my case here, I'm gonna select save in the same file location. So it just goes ahead and makes a new folder in that same photo folder we're already working in. The next setting is file type, and I wanna go ahead and save these as a JPEG, and you can go ahead and input the quality you wanna save them at. And you can see you have other options down here, such as convert profile to sRGB, or if you wanna go ahead and add a PSD file in there as well, or a TIFF file, again, you could just check these and save one out if you wanted to. In my case, I don't need that, so I'm gonna leave that unchecked. What's also cool too is you can set this up to run a Photoshop action. So if I went ahead and clicked this, such as run action, I could select one of my setup Photoshop actions that would also apply that to all these images as they're processed. So you can see, in some cases, I might have an action that I set up, such as 300 DPI, and I could leave that checked, and I would go ahead and apply that to each of these images as well. I'm actually gonna turn that off because I don't wanna run any Photoshop actions for this. But again, it's nice to have the option to do that. So once I've got this set up the way I want it to, I'm just gonna come up here and select Run. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna open up each of those images and just export them right out immediately from Photoshop. So you're just gonna go ahead and let this run and do its thing. Depending on how many images you're processing will depend on how long this process takes. But you can see this is going pretty quickly. Each image basically comes in and just goes right back off screen. So I'm just gonna go ahead and speed this up to when this finishes, which just will be probably in the next 30 seconds or so. All right, so now I don't see any more images popping up in Photoshop, so I'm gonna assume the process has finished. Let's go back into Adobe Bridge, and let's look at what we got here. You can see we have a new folder, which is set up as JPEG. So I'm just gonna double click to go inside of that. Now we can see JPEG images of all the images that we just exported out and batch processed. So obviously this is what we want. Now the final step I wanna do is I wanna batch rename all these images because you can see currently they're all named like DJI and then they have various uh, numbers at the end and they're not necessarily in order because I'm not going to send all the images that I take to the client. I'm going to send the ones that I actually like, the ones that look good. So these numbers may be out of order and I just want to kind of clean this up so it looks a little more professional. So what do I do to batch rename these files? I'm just going to select the first one. Again, I'm going to scroll down here, hold shift and just select all the files that I want to rename. And this also works for video files as well. I use this a lot, especially when I'm sending any other video clips and stuff like that. So you can rename any files using this next step. So now that I've got all these images selected, I'm just gonna right click here and I'm gonna come down here to batch rename. And that's gonna open up the batch rename options. So if we come down here for presets, I'm gonna leave that on the default. Next we have the destination folder and I want this to rename in the same folder because I just want this to actually rename the same files we're working with. I don't want it to move or copy those images. And now if we come down here to file names, we have a few different options and criteria we can set up to rename these files. So the first one I wanna select is gonna be text. And I can go ahead and name this. And this will be the first part of each of the images as it gets named. And I'll just show you here, I'll just type in client image, and then I'm gonna add an underscore like that, an underscore at the end of those. And the next thing I wanna have set up is a sequence number you can see here. So I can just come in here and select sequence number. You could also select a sequence letter if you wanna do that, or any of these other settings here, but I'm gonna select sequence number and you can select how many digits you want it to be. And if you come down here and look, you can see the new file name in this preview. So it's gonna be client image underscore. And right now, since it's on three digits, it's 001.jpg. I'm actually gonna change this here to be two digits because I don't have that many images. And I'm just gonna come over here and I'm gonna type in 01, and that'll be the name for the first image that I want to start. And again, we can see that reflected down here. Now, if you wanted to add even more criteria to your file names, you could just come over here and click this plus icon. And that'll add another setting here you could type in so I could come down here and add a sequence letter. And now you can see it's client image underscore zero one A. But again, in my case, I think that two is fine. So I'm just gonna click on this minus sign that'll go ahead and delete that. And finally, if you just wanna double check and see a preview of all the new image names you're gonna see, just come over here and click preview. And you're gonna see each of the images you currently have in your folder and what they're gonna be renamed to. So I can just go ahead and scroll down through this. You're gonna see I've got 20 images total. It's gonna be client image underscore 20 for the final image. So now you just come over here and click OK, and then just go ahead and click Rename. And immediately, it's just gonna batch process all of those, and you can see they've all been renamed. All right, guys, that's essentially how quick and easy it is to 
batch process, batch export, and batch rename your images using Adobe Bridge. Make sure y'all check out the Shutterstock blog. Every weekday they're posting lots of photography and filmmaking content and tutorials just like this one. Again, this has been Charles Jager with Shutterstock. Thanks for watching.